Hi there, welcome to Kid Squid Studios, where it all comes together. I am Kelly, and I am by no means a professional movie maker or stuntman. Come to think of it, I'm not a professional anything. What the hell have I been doing with my life? No, seriously. I'm going to break down the most challenging scene I have shot to date. So all of this had occurred over this last winter of 2020. I had just finished shooting and posting all of my holiday episodes, and I was about a month and a half ahead of schedule, which was really nice, so I had some extra time to play around and do some other jobs. Um, but I had this idea, and I wanted to try this roof scene. So I had everything laid out the night before in staging areas all around the garage with the green screens, the cameras, batteries, uh craft services table like you know i tried to set up everything i could possibly think to set up and went through the script about 50 times to make sure i didn't forget any of the different angles and shots i needed to do really planning the crap out of this scene was the only reason it even happened at all um was tons and tons of planning and sticking to the plan and making sure that you ticked off everything from the plan so when it came to the shots that needed to be done on the roof I had to get all of the shots that I'm actually in the scene. And then I had to get all of the shots that were clean plates of a scene that I will be inserted into. And making sure that you got all of the right angles of the scene. And so I had to shoot the clean plate from that same angle of just those trees that would have been behind me yeah. in that shot. So I'd be here. Okay, this is perpendicular shot for me falling backwards out of frame. And on top of the nervousness of trying to shoot a scene and keep everything straight and whatever, not waste time or light, uh, the fear of heights is actually real. I do not like them. But getting through these shots was uh, important. <laughs> and I was able to control myself and my fear um, enough to be able to do the job. So then it came to the green screen shots where I would be placed into the clean plate that I had taken on the roof. Um, to do this, I had to set up the green screen in the yard so that way the light from the sun was exactly the same. If I had shot these green screen scenes some other time or inside or something like that, I would have had to have duplicated the light scenario with fake lights as opposed to immediately after doing the roof scene, putting the green screen uh, setup in the yard at the same angles so that I would be at the same angles as I would be on the roof. So that way the light would hit my facial features, the coloration would be exactly the same, and I wouldn't have to play with those. Uh, which is often one of the downfalls or the pitfalls of doing these types of scenes is when you do the green screening, you didn't match the lighting correctly uh, to match the scene that you're being placed into. It is absolutely achievable with fake lights, but how much work that would be instead of just doing the job where the light is the same. Oh my god, the next part of the shoot was way more taxing than I thought it was going to be. But before we get to that, have you liked, subscribed, and rang the bell? So that way you get every Kid Squid Studios video. I mean, instead of some algorithm telling you what you should be ingesting and when, I mean, you don't know how old those videos are or where they've been. All right, at this point in the story, I'm about to do the fall, and I'm using a futon mattress as a crash pad. Um, and I've watched enough Corridor Crew to know that you need to approach every stunt fall, no matter how insignificant or small, seriously and safely. And this particular stunt fall, the kick out from a foot swipe style of fall, uh, can really mess you up if you do it wrong. Um, or you, it can mess you up if you do it right, <laughs> honestly. Um, I didn't get hurt during this uh thing but after doing it about 12 times for each angle that i had to record it at rolling action i uh, i did feel like i went 12 rounds with rolling an actual greco-roman wrestler from you know back in the day rolling so i made sure to action. do it as right as i could every time uh i've listened to a bunch of stuntmen walk through action. this stunt uh, many times 
I so that, that way, and I took notes and I practiced it a number of times before I went out there and tried to do it for the scene. Getting the coordination through your body to do it right so that way you don't, you know, hit your head or you don't hurt your neck or anything like that. Lean back, wait for your body to be closer to the ground before you kick out your feet. Make sure they land between your shoulder blades and keep your chin to your chest the whole way down so that way you don't damage your neck. Um, and right before you hit the ground, you make sure that the balls of your feet hit the ground too, and you slap the ground. You want to hit the ground, don't let the ground hit you, which is not my advice to you. That was all of the advice from stuntmen to like, this is how the stunt's done, that we don't recommend you do. <laughs> you know, and of course I've got to do it. It's not a one take kind of thing. You have to do it many times before you get like the fingers to reach into the range of focus. It was really difficult uh, while trying to keep your mind on the stunt and doing it correctly and getting the facial expressions right as right as you can. It was still really fun though, don't get me wrong. Just mad respect for people who do this kind of dangerous crap all the time. Um, mad respect. Amazing, amazing work. When I watch these people, like, any random scene it would just, I would be done. And it was about this point that I realized how much time and energy was going into what would pretty much amount to about 10 seconds of finished product. <laughs> it, once again, it, totally worth it. Uh, I, I love to practice, I love to get better. And that's how you get better and stronger is by exercising. So uh, working through these scenes was definitely a mental and physical exercise. Uh, and an exercise in planning, shooting, uh, scripting, and storyboarding. And really sticking to those criteria. Uh, and making sure that you've thought about everything from as many ways and angles as you could think about it. The entire scene, like all of the episodes, are shot on the Galaxy Note 9. Uh, the only shots that weren't the Galaxy Note 9 was the actual falling to the ground. That was a GoPro 3 Black uh, that I would dropped off of the roof. Buying cheap old GoPros that are used online, like buy cheap ones that are like 20 and 30 bucks. You could, <laughs> you could set them on fire, you could do anything you want. Yeah, as long as you don't damage the SD card, you can pretty much destroy a GoPro and it didn't cost you much at all. Uh, yeah, you just don't go out to dinner. You eat oodles and noodles and you paid for a GoPro. I've got links to all the gear that we used in that video as well as this one and any of our other videos in the description section down below. Please use those links. It does help us make more videos uh, and we do appreciate it, obviously. Now, on to editing this puzzle of a project. Keying the green screen and layering those images is pretty standard fare, um, but matching the resolution and granularity type so that way I didn't look too crisp and the background didn't look too crisp or they looked like they were shot on the same camera at the same time from the same distance, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that was a new thing. Getting that camera flare in there, uh, it, none of that camera flare, those light flares are real. Um, getting them in there is one thing, uh, but to get them to move as if it's actually reacting to the lens moving through space. Or when I block the light had to get it to flicker like that, that was brand new, that was really fun uh, and really challenging to get it to feel real or as real as I can make it. You guys might look at it and be like, "That's I knew it wasn't real, but you know, I tried. Everything in this scene was hand tracked, so I got a lot of hands-on experience. Um, frame to frame, making things work right. Uh, thankfully, the last step of this whole process was sound design. And comparatively speaking, it was like a breath of fresh air, like, okay, whew, the pressure's gone from the visuals. Um, and now we just have to have everything sound real. Um, it gets some dramatic uh, builders and risers and things like that to really make it pop. Which was just fun, 
like playing with icing on a cake after you've made the cake. Like, the cake is tons of work, and icing is still work, but relatively, it's fun work. You know, not that, hey, if you have fun making the whole cake, I get it, that's great, but I just mean, you know what I mean. Screw you guys. And boom, three full days for a fraction of a minute's worth of footage. <laughs> no, it was totally worth doing it. Um, I feel way more capable and confident in trying to do bigger and better scenes like that. Cannot wait to try more of them. I want to push myself to get stronger at planning scenes and doing harder and harder projects. So if you liked this video, please leave it in the comment section down below. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, and we'll see you right back here at Kid Squid Studios where it all comes together. Till next time, stay safe, keep creative.